Thank you, folks. Um, the director, Amir Naifam, was supposed to be here with us. Unfortunately, uh, he's not responding to his, uh, to his Zoom requests at the moment, um, which uh, means that the sleep got the better of him, mm -hmm. um, which leaves the conversation to us. Um, Muhammad, are you still here? Yeah. Would you like to join us? We're honored to have here actor, filmmaker, Muhammad Bakri. Who's jumping in <laughs> to take the place? Thank you. And of course, Yona Shemtov from Encounter. It should be on. It's on. Hi, everybody. Um, that was a gorgeous, gorgeous, piercing film. I didn't actually watch it in advance so that I could watch it in the moment. Um, and I guess, Mohammed, maybe for this audience, if you're willing to share a little bit about the family reunification law, maybe to explain a little bit about why uh, the family is separated in some ways, and sort of that was in the news a lot this summer. Um, and if you could say a little bit about how, from your vantage point, that speaks to the division, the sort of Israeli policies fragmenting Palestinians. Basically, there's an Israeli law that doesn't allow him to live with his wife, correct? Yeah. Yes. So, I guess for me, what stood out in the film when I, when I was watching is the way in which it wasn't overtly political, but actually every move of it was political, and you got a sense of how every turn of Mustafa, Mohammed Mustafa's life was controlled by different policies and how it's sort of breaking down families and, and a sense of peoplehood. Actually, uh, uh, I respect my friend Isi, so I, I um, agreed to come to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm not the filmmaker and I cannot talk in his name. I am Palestinian, but I cannot talk in his name. Anyway, uh, but I respect AC and you and you too. That's the reason I came and sit sat here. Can you tell us how it landed for you, the film? Like no, I just want to explain only one one small thing about the first question. I live in Israel. I was born in Israel. Uh, so automatically, I am Israeli by the passport. So I can move and go to Ramallah or to the West Bank or to Nablus whenever I want. Only if there is a curfew, I cannot go in because it's closed. But in the daily life, I can go anytime to the West Bank. But nobody from the West Bank can come to me inside Israel without really the permission that we saw in the film. So, and there are some families really on the border, like in uh, Baqa al Sharqi, Baqa al Garbiye, uh, Barta'a, and Barta'a. They, they are on the line, on the border. Some people, um, they, they divide it really families, like in the film. I can say that it happened, and it's based on real life, unfortunately. That's what's going on, and maybe worse than this. I, I know that the director actually, his, it's, he based it on his parents' story. His parents were on both sides of that border. That, that separation wall was put up uh, between his mother and his father. And um, and and had to tell that story as as just as just one part of this element. I wanted to say on the, on the other Israel element that you know for many years we focused mostly on Palestinian citizens like Muhammad, right. and to not see this connection is to ignore to ignore half the picture. And uh, it, it's really I think this this story connects it all. I, was, I must say that I respect uh, other Israel film festival that brought this kind of film to the American audience because I'm sure 
that the American audience don't know enough details about the daily life of the Palestinians in the West Bank and in Gaza. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. And and I, I, I honestly, he's not here, but to thank the director who, who brings it. First of all, not all Palestinian films will show at a Jewish institution at a festival named Other Israel. Um, and I, we, I had spoken to this director in the past, and he really shared how um, important it is for not just Palestinians and um, uh, people who are directly connected to see this film, but to reach actually the Jewish audience to see this. We, we read the news. We we see these um, you know th these these very big generalizations about the Palestinian community, and never do we get to see a story of a father trying to get to his son in a hospital. It just makes me cry when I when I think about it, and and it's it's on the day to day. It's like no politics. This is just the day to day, and this is what the Jewish community needs to see. And you know I think Encounter does that too in some ways. Yeah, so can I ask you a question, Mohammed, on this? Is it okay, Afshar? What? You're, you're Palestinian citizen of Israel, yeah. right? When you're watching this film, I am curious, like what does it bring up for you in terms of your feeling of connection or not connection to Palestinians who are living in the West Bank, to Palestinians that are living within Israel, especially in the shadow of May, the last, the war with Gaza, when you see this film, from from your perspective as a Palestinian that lives inside Israel and you have sort of the, the wild card that you can pass the checkpoints, you can move through, what's that like to sit at the intersection of both? When I am in my car, in my the Israeli number, I never dare to do that, to like to to cross the line like they did in the film. Never, because I feel so humiliated and, and humiliating the other, you know. So I never do that. But when I was sitting in the, uh, this is the second uh, time that I see the film. Second time. Today, perhaps because you are here, Perhaps because it's happening here in the JCC, and I know there are a lot of Jews in, in, the, in, in the hall. Perhaps, I don't know. I felt the separation much stronger than when I watched it in my country. And I felt like it's a kind of death. Separation is death. When you separate from somebody that you so love, like father, like mother, like wife, like son, it's like to die. It's like sorrow, uh, like great it's sorrow. Like a, uh, so yeah, great ache, sorrow. So, um, and I'm not talking about details now, about the filmmaker, and I am not talking about uh, the use of the Europe European, uh, which is not uh, exactly uh, clear for me. Anyway, uh, I'm talking about uh, the pain, the humanic Palestinian pain in its details. It's not slogan, it's not uh, like a placard. It is people, especially Ali, the main character, Ali Suleiman, he is a great actor, really great actor, and he brought all these kind, humanic details that uh, not many actors can do that. Not many. Yes, the film felt intimate. I think one of the things that felt intimate, I was listening on the way here to a podcast um, with Brian Stevenson who talks about being proximate, what it means to actually be close. And it's just so different when you're reading about it in the news, it's kind of ideas, and the film was so intimate. It brought you into the details of daily life. His mother snoring at night, feeding the children, the young boy's fear 
you know, where he actually turned into a paternal figure to calm the young boy down, all while trying to figure out getting to his son in what seemed to me like a crazy maze. It was like watching The Matrix. It felt like a bigger uh, metaphor for where we are in this moment in, I don't even know if you can continue to call it the conflict, the reality on the ground. I, th I think that uh, Ali has a great talent and he has a great love. I saw him with his family, with his real family in Nazareth. He's like that. And uh, I think that I tell you shlichut. He had a mission? Mission, not mission. Mission is not shlichut. Mission is matara. Shlichut is more... Uh, like an ambassador, kind of like to send. Yes, the message? not ambassador in the poli in, 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 in in the political, yeah, human in, not in the, the political story. meaning. Because, for example, when he was going through the checkpoint, the big checkpoint, with the hundreds of uh, workers, he and his friend, Ab yeah. uh, uh, the other one, Abu Nidal. Yes, Abu N Abu Nidal. I felt like. He was <laughs> like carrying the whole people on his on his shoulder. He's carrying the whole stories of the whole people who were there. And this remind me, this scene, there is an Israeli uh, journalist. I think he was here in other Israel film festival. Somebody did a film about him and about Ghassan Abbas, Shlomi Eldar, you course. remember yeah, him? Yeah, know, we know Shlomi well. He did, f uh, he was working in the Israeli TV in Channel One, yani prime time, and I was watching the news, and he made a reportage, an interview with one from Gaza, like these people that we saw. At three or four in the morning, he was sitting on the banquet on, uh, on, on, the, on, on the ground and putting his hand like this. And Shlomi was asking him, why you cover your face? And he said with a suffocated voice, I don't want my children to see me in the TV. He was shame. He felt shame that he is so humiliated. And he didn't want to show this humiliation to his children. Uh, I think Ali was like this man but with love, with smile, with life, and with the humanity. And this is the devotion, devotion. This is devotion, Korim Lezeh, Shlichut. Okay. The, the thing I just want to say on this note, to me, first of all, as, as a Jew and as an Israeli citizen, the film evoked shame in me. Meaning, I think there is a mirror being held back up to Jews and to Israelis to ask us to look in the mirror if this lines up with our vision for what we hope for. The film, for me, what was powerful on our programs, some of you here have been with us on the programs, you encounter, yes, an, but a deep sense of dignity. There is a deep sense of pride at the same time that he's moving through this crazy sense of what's going on. There's a deep, deep sense of dignity that I think the whole film to me felt like a tribute to resilience in the midst of a very hard situation. I, I just wanna ask you, Yitzi, as like a closing comment. You, you mentioned how this is different than some of the selections that you've had in the past. And I'd love for you to say a little bit more about 
why this film? Why this film for the closing night? And what was involved in your calculus? Like why, why now to make that turn? I don't think the turn happened now. I think we've been we've been uh, crossing these borders for for a while now. But uh, but it's definitely wasn't there always from the beginning. Um, and and I think this film, first of all, is a beautiful film that um, that gives us a perspective. I think the most important thing about this film, beyond it, like you know, holding up as just a good film, but engages anyone, any anyone around the world. You don't have to know anything about the Pal Palestinian Israeli conflict. You. Can you can connect to a father trying to get to his son. That's you know a classic drama, and I, I think that the that the film just was able to allow an audience to see a perspective, a world, have a little frame into the Palestinian daily life, um, often and I think in a very authentic and responsible way. Um, the those checkpoint scenes were shot at the checkpoint with real people there. It was, you know, this wasn't a documentary, but, but it was. It they, they didn't. Uh, this wasn't a Hollywood set that, uh, you know, recreated it all. And to see all the all the, all those all the details of a non-political story to take us beyond the headlines was just a perfect film for us. And I think, you know, there's the the connections also the bigger connections of this being a film that you know if you would like to to put that border up and say no 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 this is this is a separate problem this is the west bank you this movie shows that this is all connected uh, occupation where where it started the occupation um, ruins any 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 good land Has the film shown in it? I don't think it has had um, distribution in Israel at all, um, but it is going to have distribution here. Again, Film Movement's going to give it a full release, and it's getting some international attention, and I think it's good for, for audiences of every kind. Um, I want to take a couple of co um, uh, questions, comments, thoughts from the audience, reflections, um, and we could start down here. So, uh, first of all, I just really want to thank Carol and the JCC, I think that, uh, as Yona said, why this to end the film? It's an incredibly depressing film to end the entire festival on, and it does, it makes us feel shameful. Uh, it makes me feel shameful, and it opens our eyes, and it's, uh, you know, I mean, it's very painful, but it, it is interesting that <laughs> we really are leaving on a very depressing note, and Carol, I applaud your courage to, uh, challenge our community. I don't, by the way, find it a uh, dep dep depressing film. Oh, okay. I, fi I find it to be wha one of the more hopeful stories. Hi. Um, I, I want to... Oh. Hi. <laughs> Nancy Kaufman, uh, a proud alum of the Encounter program. And it, uh, you know, this took me back to going on Encounter, to be honest with you, uh, because what Encounter has done for American Jewish leaders from all perspectives is to uh, put us in touch with the humanity and the reality of what Palestinians live through day by day. And um, as a Palestinian Israeli, I guess, I mean, I am thrilled that Encounter is now taking Israeli Jews to the West Bank. I'm thrilled that that's happening because I think that's the future is in Israelis opening their eyes. But I'm curious, do you ever go to the West Bank? I'm just interested. Yes. I, 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 we used to work. I used to work in, before the Intifada, the second Intifada, I used to work in uh, Ramallah, in the theater because I wanted to help uh, my friend who was uh, the director of that, this theater. I wanted to, help to support him and to help him uh, as an actor. So I did uh, seven, eight years work there, but when the Antifada started, the second one, I left. I left back home because I felt uh, 
it was quite very dangerous to be there under the occupation again. Yes, for sure. I, I believe that uh, art in general, all kind of arts doing this and opening hearts, opening mind. And I, I believe in dialogue. I believe that it's time for dialogue more than ever because it's really, we are on the, on, 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 on the top of the, uh, before the explosion. We must do something. So I believe that, yes, Kolnoa cinema and theater and all kind of arts, merakichim et ha'enishiyut. It's making you more, more human and more open and more open mind to accept the other, to understand the other. I believe so. If it's real, uh, one is good one. Yes, sure. Yeah, hi. Um, I I want to present a different perspective. Of what um, I I grew up in Argentina, and uh, just uh, so you know, um, being Jewish in Argentina, um, I always never felt I had a country because I was totally discriminated. You couldn't be present to Argentina when I grew up because. I was not Catholic. I came here to the US because I love electronics and computers and whatever. And it is not my home. In college, it, you know, so I was a speak or a kike, whatever you call it. So I was, I never had a home. I still don't have a home. So when I see the movie, I feel like Israelis and Palestinians, they all, both of them have a home. I mean, there is an issue of the fought, there is a war, there is a whole sort of things. But for you to say that you're ashamed, I'm very proud of what Israel did and what the Jews did. And they're very lucky, I feel, the Palestinians to have Israelis on the other side. If you were in this Venezuela or Argentina or Iran or whatever, you're dead. You know, just like, so the, the whole thing I find it uh, is, is the, the, this guilt or, or this approach that is that I think Israel is the most, is the, the luckiest people that, that you couldn't have anything better than have I'll, I'll, I'll answer this very briefly if I may um, uh, I, I think that I think that Israel's done amazing things wonderful things none of it will excuse treating people in, in any kind of inhuman way and that's something that uh, that that there's no question about <laughs> we'll take one last comment over here thank you I I was very curious that there's one point in the movie, and I think I understand it emotionally, where he says, but I don't want an Israeli ID. You know, his wife points out that he could have had one, and he says he does not want one. And what I wondered is what difference it would make to him to have one had he made the other choice. I cannot answer this question because, I mean, if you ask me if I will move to live in Ramallah, I will say no. I have an Israeli uh, ID and I will not go to, to live in Ramallah and to leave my home because my home is where I was born. My childhood, my memories, my, my relatives, my family, my mother, my father, my sisters, my brothers. So why I had should to leave all 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 my my close people for a flag? For ID? No. My ID is what I feel, not what I have in my pocket. This is my ID. So I, c I can imagine that he feels the same. Why he should go to, to live in Israel? 
His mother is in Ramallah, or, or whatever, in, in the West Bank. So why he have to go and live uh, in, in other place? Why should, why should he? But, but we can discuss if it's um, healthy for a grown man to be living with his mother. That's a whole, a whole other story for, for another kind of festival. Um, Real Abilities comes up later this year. Um, I want to give a huge thank you, first of all, to Muhammad Bakri for joining our conversation, for being here. <laughs> Yona, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for moderating this and bringing us together. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for watching the film. Tell your friends. You could still make a couple of other films. If you open them tonight, you'll have 48 hours to watch them online. Enjoy. Thank you all, and have a good night.